13 of 31 Wild Halloween Review Nights. Today's the day that we look at zombies. And, and spirits. Zombies and spirits. Hello. Hey, this is Paranorman. Released in 2012, the story focuses around 11-year-old Norman Babcock, who has the ability to make contact with the dead. He's the only one who can both speak and see them. Because of this, he is seen as a freak by others, including his family, as nobody believes that he actually can speak to dead people, except for his one friend, Neil. One day, Norman's crazy uncle comes to him, informing him about a century-old witch's curse that needs to be stopped. After his uncle dies, Norman is responsible for retrieving a book to perform a ritual to keep the curse away. But when Norman is disturbed during the ritual, the town becomes invaded with the risen dead. Now Norman is responsible for saving his home and everyone from the terror these ghouls bring. I'm really starting to enjoy the fact that stop motion animation is kind of becoming a Halloween thing. Like when you think stop motion animated films, you instantly connect it with Christmas because of all the Rankin Bass stuff. It hasn't really been until the last couple of years that we've been getting these stop-motion creepy Halloween films. Paranorman is just one of them, but you have films like Nightmare Before Christmas and Corpse Bride. You also have that film Coraline and Frankenweenie, which is another Tim Burton film based on a short film that he originally did. We're not going to be talking about Frankenweenie, so sorry about that. The stop-motion claymation puppetry animation work, uh, number one, really long process. If the information I have is right, I heard that it takes about a full day to produce five seconds of anything stop motion related, which is insane. And this film, not including the credits, is about an hour and 23 minutes, an hour and 24 minutes, so just imagine how long it took to make this film. That's something I believe needs to be given credit to. Uh, people will look at films like Corpse Bride or like Paranorman and they'll say, well, it's a cheesy little stop motion film. It won't be as memorable, it'll become underrated, it won't get that much appreciation, but I feel that stop motion films, any kind, whether they're Halloween or Christmas or just stop motion in general, I think a lot of credit needs to go to the people that actually do this stuff because it takes a long time. You know, it's a, it's a lot of work stop motion. So I give you, I, if you do stop motion out there, whether you are a professional or it's just a hobby you like to do, I give you props. You get two thumbs up from me and I like the work you do. But I'm, I'm really starting to dig how stop motion is slowly becoming a Halloween thing as well. There, I mean, there haven't been as many creepy Halloween horror-ish type stop motion films as there should be, but uh, Paranorman is definitely in that category. It looks really cool. You can clearly tell that the characters are made out of some clay. Uh, the eyes on the characters, though, especially with Norman that I noticed, the eyes are really unique because you do see kind of a reflection from their eyes. So the character designs in this movie are pretty cool. None of them were gross, if I have to put it in that sense. I mean, maybe like one or two characters, just the way that they were formed, but it wasn't an ugly film to look at. You know, it's, it, it, was, it was a unique film. It's very unique, and I don't hear many people talking about it either. I know it does play around Halloween. I don't see it on many uh, Halloween tier lists. Should I phrase it like that? I don't know, but on social media, I see people putting a list of their favorite Halloween films. I rarely ever see this one, and I think it does deserve some credit because it is freaky. And that's something that really surprises me about the film, just kind of how freaky and even how dark the film is. Watching the film again for this project, I started getting a Monster House vibe from it. You know, the film is aimed for children, and it does get pretty intense with how dark it gets. I mean, the main character, first off, the character of Norman, you know, this poor kid, he's just not liked by anyone. Like, the best way to describe this kid is literally by saying, nobody likes him. He is bullied by everyone, even his 
parents, especially his dad, just kind of looked down on him. It's like, oh, you're a bit freaky, kid. This has to stop. You're embarrassing us. It's like, this, this poor kid. Yeah, I got a bit of Monster House vibes while watching this film just because of how spooky and uh, a bit horrorish it got. It's a children. It's a it's a children's horror film, which is a category of its own. It has a very dark and upsetting feeling to it because the situation that they're dealing with is pretty serious and we're letting an 11 year old child take care of the situation. He's taking it seriously. Uh, his friend Neil can be seen as the goofy one, the comic relief in the story, I guess, but not even he has that many funny jokes. I mean, there are some funny gags in this film. I, I did chuckle a few times, like uh, Norman is brought to Neil's house. Neil wants Norman to contact and see his dead dog so this way he can kind of play with him a bit. And Norman finds the dog, the dog's split in half, and Neil wants to play fetch with the stick, and Norman's never played fetch before. So he's like, how do you play? And Neil's explaining it. So Norman throws the stick, it bounces off a tree and goes right into Neil's face. I laughed at that. Norman's uncle at one point, he does die in the film. He's in his own little room, he starts coughing and then passes away and you see the ghost coming up. But then he jumps back up, he's like, nope, not yet, and then he actually dies. There's also a scene where they were doing a school play. It kind of revolves around the situation going on with witches. They finish off with the song, the kids, and as people are clapping, you can hear in the background, somebody just shouts, You suck! I'm like, whoa! This play is being put on by children. <laughs> Who says that at a kid's play? There's one point where the zombies, they've come up from the surface, and there's a guy getting chips from a vending machine, and he sees the zombie, so he wants the vending machine to give him his snack quicker. But it doesn't happen, so he runs off, and then the snack comes down. He runs back, takes the snack, and then leaves. Uh, I got a little laugh out of that. And uh, the character Alvin, who's the bully in the story, he joins the team that's going to help Norman, which is his sister, Neil, and then Neil's brother. They have to get into this building where there's a bunch of books, uh, and they go, does anybody know how to pick a lock? And Alvin's like, I do. And he breaks the window of the door, reaches in, and unlocks it from the inside. I've seen that technique a few times, uh, but it was I found it humorous in this specific scene just because of how casual it was. Yeah, Paranorman is a different kind of story. It's not one that really little kids should watch, especially if they're prone to get really scared, because uh, this does have its scary elements. The ending is, uh, can be a bit frightening. In my opinion, it wasn't as frightening as it was dark. I mean, this poor kid's just getting bashed around everywhere. You know, it's, it's a little sad, subtle ending, but by God, is it a different children's film. And I think that's good. I, I think it's good to be a little different. Uh, if you're looking to get scared by a kid's film, this one would work. Or if you're just in the mood for a creepy, different kind of kid's film, this one would work. <laughs> the last thing I have to say about Paranorman is the overall idea of the film, or a message, I guess, if you want to consider it that, is uh, the idea of being scared. Uh, it's said by Norman's dad at one point, and it is brought up later, you know, sometimes people do the things they do because they're scared. Norman's dad brings this up at one point, it's brought up later in the film. It's said that people do the things they do because they're scared, and that is 100% true, and it's very present, not just in this film, but in every other film we've been watching in this series so far, especially with the Universal stuff. Like, that's, that's how far this goes. People only react a certain way because they're scared, and we are gonna see this theme and idea in the next few stuff, especially in the next thing that we're going to be talking about tomorrow. But I like that message. I like that idea. And I like Paranorman. I don't love it, but I like it. It's a cute little film. It's a dark little film. Uh, but if you are interested in seeing it, you should definitely check it out. Uh, it's got a very Halloween-y vibe to it. It doesn't take place on Halloween, which I think is the only down. That would have probably made the story a little more interesting, but, you know, it is what it is. It's still a pretty interesting film. The other thing, also, now thinking about it, is we're never really explained how Norman's abilities work. Like, we are, but we 
we don't go into too much detail. Like, there's no narration or backstory to why this happened, why he could see dead people. It just kind of happens. And I guess that's fine. And with that said, that's the end of the Paranorman discussion. Hopefully you enjoyed me talking about that. Hey, since this film isn't even 10 years old yet, maybe you've seen the film. If you have, let me know what you thought about it. If you haven't seen it, let me know if you're interested in seeing it. And, uh... That's all the questions that are coming to my brain. <laughs> That's it for day 13, folks. It's, it's the 13th day. You know, I could have easily just stopped the series right here. I didn't have to do the full 31 days. I could have just done 13 wild Halloween review nights. But I'm going the whole month because we got a lot more to talk about, especially tomorrow, where we're going to talk about something a little bit different. We've been talking a lot about films. And I think it's time we finally get to some television specials, because that's something I want to bring into the mix of this series. So come back tomorrow. I got a pretty interesting discussion planned out for tomorrow. It's about a TV special that you probably have never heard of before. Thanks for watching The Wild Review on The Wild Review, and you just saw me review a thing. And that is 100% true. My light went out again. It's kind of working. It was brighter before. These are doing fine, and they were giving me a problem. <laughs>